His Excellency Dr. Alex Oti is motivated by excellence. And everything he touches, you would see that you would see that touch of excellence in it. Um, which is why we are here today. I'm sure you know that this is the very first time that a government in Abia State is calling non-governmental organizations for this sort of interaction, right? Yes. This is the very first time it's happening. And it's true to the character of Dr. Alex Oti. He's running a purely inclusive government. So we are here because we want to discuss with you how you will help this administration drive development to the grassroots in Abia State. We know the key role that you play as a non-governmental organization. We know that. Okay, uh, Janice, our um, mic is back. I didn't want interruption, that was why I had to use my voice, so thank you very much. So we know the role you play as non-governmental organizations in driving the uh, SDGs. You know what SDGs are, right? Yes. Do you know what SDGs are? Yes. SDGs are Sustainable Development Goals. If you don't know them, you need to know them because knowing SDGs will help you do your work. Because a lot of donor agencies, a lot of multilaterals tie their donations, their grants, their gifts to you driving at least one aspect of the sustainable development goals. SDGs are the successor of MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals. After we had reached the Millennium Development Goals, we are now looking at Sustainable Development Goals. And if you have an idea of that, what are those goals? Some of them are ending poverty, making education available to everybody. You know, ending hunger, housing, health and all of those and in your roles as NGOs this government wants to partner with you to drive down our own objectives as an administration the government of Dr. Alex Oti wants to develop Abia entirely that's the, the only objective there's nothing else that he wants to do in this state he wants to develop Abia he wants to increase the earning capacity of residents and citizens of Abia State. He wants to create wealth for everyone in Abia State. And of course, it's not going to happen overnight. We are going to be building it brick by brick, block by block, until the full structure of wealth creation is erected in Abia State. So that is the essence of this interaction. By the time the senior special assistant to the governor of multilateral agencies and donor agencies will be addressing you, you will now see here the full details of what this gathering is about. Mine is to open it and to prepare your mind for a beautiful journey with the state government. Thank you for coming and thank you as you pay attention to all that will happen here today. Ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, once again. Let me start by thanking all of you for attending this interactive meeting between my office, the Office of Multilateral and Donor Agencies. I want to state here that this office is first of a kind that is actually established in the state. And the office is directly reporting to the governor of the state. You are present here today to demonstrate your commitment to the development and well-being of our great state. Just yesterday, uh, I was informed that 
we had a very big mist up of the gates. Some people said, coming yesterday shows the passion, the zeal. All of us here have to move this step forward. I want to thank you. Firstly, I would like to emphasize the importance of partnership and collaboration between the government and NGOs in achieving our shared goals of sustainable development goal and poverty alleviation. NGOs play a vital role in implementing projects and programs that directly impact the lives of our people. Their expertise, passion, and dedication make you invaluable partners in our collective efforts towards progress. I would like you to be very attentive as, in a nutshell, I will discuss the point that brought us here together. One is strengthening collaboration. We believe that effective collaboration between the government and the NGOs is essential for successful development initiatives. We encourage NGOs to share knowledge, experience, and best practice with each other and with the government. Together we can leverage on our resources and expertise to mind the impact of our event intervention. Like the Deputy Officer rightly said, the government has a very good plan for the state. And for us to move, we must come together. We must collaborate. We also have a place that will have a point a meeting point to respond and also to move. That collaboration is very, very important. And as a sector that's very critical in development startup, NGOs is very key. And that's why we're here today to deliver it. Second is streamlining processes. We are committed to streamlining administrative processes to make it easier for NGOs to carry out their work. This includes simplifying reporting requirements, facilitating project approvals, and improving coordination mechanism between NGOs and government agencies. Your feedback and suggestions in this regard are highly valid. There is no project, there is no government that will run, a government that will not allow NGOs to make their inputs. We need feedback. We understand the importance of feedback because feedback strengthens our understanding to do better. There are initiatives that possibly the government can embark on. But as I, as I did, there should be one or two concerns that will be raised. The only way we can get that data very correctly, probably when we engage NGOs, to give all that feedback. Because you reach out to the grassroots. So for us to be here is for us to understand how we can actually engage that kind of grievance redress mechanism, citizenship engagement, and feedback mechanism to ensure that whatever we are doing to the grassroots, we are able to get it correctly and also be informed on areas we will improve. And I think that is the second reason why we are here to deliberate. Funding opportunities. We recognize the importance of funding for NGOs to implement their programs. Today, we will discuss various funding opportunities provided by multilateral and donor agencies. We will also explore ways to enhance access to these funds for NGOs in other states. Additionally, we encourage NGOs to diversify their funding sources and explore innovative financing models. Great enough, we have the governor that understands the language of multilateral agencies. We have crops of appointees that have worked in different aspects of multilateral and donor agencies. I think we have the knowledge. We feel there is need for us to not just look at this issue a one-sided thing. Let's look at it holistically. Let's see how we can partner with NGOs to get funding. We understand from my understanding and what I've received that there are some points that you get stuck when you are trying to assess grants 
because you don't have the, the backing of the government. The office has been created to give it that enabling environment to strive. In this case now, we are able to have interface with what about multilateral? Is it World Bank? Is it African Union Bank? Is it EU? We will reach out to them to ensure that that grant comes to Abia. And we we'll use you to strive to implement. Government policies direction on partnership. Let me note that the present administration of His Excellency Dr. LSOT runs a transparent and open government. This has, of course, started yielding a wonderful benefit. Upon the resolution of my office, the country director of Bobo has visited Abia State. I think it's something that gladdens the minds of Abians to show you that we are here for a serious business. In his working visit, he came with tax team leaders that are handling implementing several projects in Abia State. Now I remind you that we have some projects assisted by the World Bank in this state. The Rural Assets and Agriculture Marketing Project, the Innovative uh, Developmental Project in Abia, Ideas, the EDKS, Nigerian COVID-19 Recovery Stimulus Project. We have project uh, on um, um, new map that just concluded and also looking at where to have European Union backing. These are projects that are also on the World Bank. Recently, we have projects called across Africa Development Bank and we've invited the country director to have interface. What are the important of them coming here? It's also to open the gateway. For us to assess some of the projects that are in the pipeline and see how we can actually benefit. It's quite unfortunate that the debt profile of Abia State is very high because some of the projects given to them were not properly implemented. But going forward, we are looking at where to when project comes, whether low facility or grand facility, we have value for that funding. We have value for that facilities. So we are strengthening the system to ensure that we have check-in and check-out. There's going to be a quality control assurance. In all Recently, we had the representative of UNDP in Abia State. We've reached out to them and have partnership in terms of ease of doing business and IGR reform. We've uh, started, and as you can see, aside that, after that, we we'll have a scale up of that project. And UNDP drive their project using the non-state actors, NGOs like you. In the course of our interactive session, I will actually explain better and where you can come in. My office has also reached out to International Organization of Migration. Recently, the Chief of Mission of International Organization of Migration has visited at their state, and His Excellency has given approval and request that he wants the International Organization of Migration to have the presence in Abia State. Wow. And he's ready to ensure that the complex or anything they're going to use, the state is going to fund it to ensure that we have the presence of the International Organization of Migration. My office is actually working on a project to ensure that this comes to reality. And once that happens, that complex we house other multilateral and donor agencies, EU, USID, UKAID, UNICEF, exclamation. They will be domiciled in Abia. The important of that is, Abia State will be the first state in South, South and South East to have such office. And it's something we are working on. Hopefully by God's grace, it will come to reality. Monitoring and evaluation is a key part why we must come together. Like I rightly said, we must have value for our money. We must have value for whatever we are doing. We are going to have an open government 
we will allow the non-state actors like you to help us monitor and show commitment in what is going on. Part of this team, my office will collaborate with people to ensure that you are engaged to monitor some of the projects that is ongoing and also reach out to the partners to utilize their capacity. Networking and knowledge sharing. I will meet you with you guys. My office will collaborate with you guys to share knowledge. Nobody is an escapade of knowledge. And I believe that when we share knowledge, we are able to improve in our own ways. There are NGOs that need other NGOs to improve. So we need to sit down and look at the lessons learned in previous assignments and we'll see a way to move forward. There should be a form of capacity building where we'll be learning how to do a whole lot of proposal the way to write, there's of resource mobilization. There should be a way that if you're writing from Abia, you show very level of kind of training and your proposal should be bankable. That was ever I did say yes, this proposal is coming from Abia State NGOs. Yes, this my office is ready to provide that capacity. I believe by that, working together, we can achieve remarkable results and making a lasting impact on the lives of the people. I'm confident that this discussion today will provide valuable insights and foster partnership that will drive positive change in our states. Once again, I thank you all for your presence and participation. Let's make this interactive meeting productive, engaging, and I believe we have all cause to glorify God. Abia Kwenu. Abia Kwenu. The new Abia is so far. Thank you very much. There is no way the people who are the grassroots will do it better and understand government's effort better when the people at the civil society angles are not properly quiet and wrong. That is just the truth. And the reason why it is so so apt and very important is based on the fact that the civil society, by virtue of their work, by virtue of the work we do, we are neutral. We don't belong to any political party. We don't belong to any political party. We are neutral. And because we are neutral, this is where the government, the government, must cash in. And another one, which is so that allow others to also express their opinion, is this problem of funding, funding, funding support is a very big challenge. And let me tell you the truth, sir. The truth of the matter is that in the past, most of the funders, most of the funding agencies are constrained effectively. Yes, at least the last one. Just let me two minutes so that others will have the I'm running it off now. I'm running it off now. In the past, it is discovered, it is discovered that we may not, we have not been able to give adequate accounts of the money that comes in. I know. I'm coming. That, listen, listen, this is not true. My own is that, for those who know me, I'm always trying to. The point is, we are not able to give adequate account of the money that comes in on the basis of the state and on the basis of the people, the civil society actor. Is your group, Chico Mekra Anyong, administrative manager, Yatitu Skinny and I Foundation? Yatitu Skinny and I Foundation is a non profit, non governmental organization which helps to reduce the burden of kidney problem in our state. And fortunately for us, we are the only organization in the whole of Southeastern Nigeria. Let me go straight to our challenge, our challenges. During the previous administration, we kept having uh, so much views coming from the government, even when we are doing the work that the government is supposed to do for our people. 
and the northern part of Nigeria, it is the government who takes care of this particular issue. Because you know the cost of uh, going through the IUCs, I'm not talking about transplant. So the, the, the views we are coming at the point we had to close down. Because we normally give a show, uh, we normally give free or less money for kidney, indigent kidney disease patients. But at the point we had to close down. And because of that, we lost many of our patients to death because they weren't able to uh, afford dialysis. So our why I came here is so that the current government will know what we face through and how we've been contributing or how far we have done to make life bearable for the indigent kidney patients in Kajia State. Thank you. My name is Jonathan K. Ayuman, the Community Engagement Officer of the Innovation Hall for Inclusiveness, Empowerment, and Social Development, City Hall. City Hall is a non-profit that deals in health systems oriented, um, community development, youth, women, and children, social welfare. So, um, so far, so good. We've implemented projects in other states and have realized that NGOs are facing key issues, especially when it has to do with activities in rural and underserved communities. The area of inclusion is number one area that we will visit it both as a government, as non-profit organizations. One, there is no environment for NGOs to thrive in those places. And I appreciate the uh, government led by Dr. Alex Gotti for this inclusive uh, recognition of NGOs in the state. So most of the things we are deliberating is things that we are seeing the lights already shining. One, issues that has to do with community development revolves around adopting participatory processes and youths who are key players in the field are not given the opportunity. The vulnerables are also given the opportunities and by so doing, sometimes NGOs go and initiate ideas in the communities and there is no further sustainability there is no sustainability either from the NGO or from the state to move these ideas or projects forward. You discover that most of the things, um, most NGOs do, especially in the South community, has done projects, supposed projects to activities. If you check very well, if there is International Day of, for instance, a girl's child, NGOs will filter the places to do what the activity and that by ending. But there are institutionalized projects that can be handled if government should support the initiatives and make sure that any project that is ideal is sustained. This is the only way that we can get things done. And funding, as you say, is very important. Thank you very much. We've existed for the past 18 years. We've been running um, programs, basically structural positioning of the academic and moral performance of the child and their general well-being. We've been interacting with schools over the years. And it's like a very best yeah. <laughs> of the NGO and the impact of the state. We have had our trainings with the teachers in the region, the school zone. For very good learning um, and all that, even as a general, we also have a program for talking teachers and uh, trying to interact with teachers and tell them about the what we do with children and youth and their schools. We handle moral instruction in schools, in Kabia, we can be able to bring the moral guidance 
and the society we are not here to say it all. But because we don't have so much time, I think we can put us on paper what we have seen all these two 18 years and all that because we have had more time to begin to talk. And so they can they deliberate enough for you to see it. You can also talk to our engineer office and look around and see what we are doing here. We are just here in Hawaii. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Consultant. So, so, I am the administrator of the Tomorrow Foundation. Now, we are on very specific in terms of what we face as an organization. Now, most times, um, in terms of achieving the SDG goals, NGOs and government are supposed to work as hand in those. Now, most times, some of the challenges we face is let's take the issue of the four in terms of quality education. When you go into a community, you put in facilities, something like our foundation has built schools in other states there. Now it's time for government to own these properties, protect them. Sometimes you go back there, you see them in the gym, you have there, and sometimes you vandalize. So it's not, and you yourself have money at the spent, it's not like for the NGO to provide security and ever. So they also, we're also in back on rural electrification. The organization has also created transformers. Now you still see the same thing. Sometimes you donate. That same community also comes back to you to help them energize those transformers. So I think most of these challenges are most times that might not even be your budget. You feel you just go and get energized. So I think the challenge you have is that government itself needs to collaborate. Where you understand that this is multi-layered, when the government itself follows up and ensures that at the end of the day, my name is David Obinuna Agiele. I'm the founder and executive director of Center for Citizens with Disabilities in Nigeria. Proud of my appointment as a SA to the Governor of Persons with Disabilities. I've also worked as a member of the steering committee for 14 years of Nigeria Civil Society Situation Group. I've also served as a member of the Coordinating Committee for eight years with Transition Policy Group. I've worked in Abia State and we have office in the Lagos and Abuja. When I heard about this meeting, I said I would personally like to attend, even though I have an event today, which we are just finishing before coming to this place. You may ask, what is my agenda of coming here? I just want to re-emphasize what my colleagues have told you in the past of the readiness of this government to partner and work with non-profit organizations, civil society, and other humanitarian inter intervention groups in the state. If there is anyone that has cried so much about Abia State and the work of civil society or NGO, I'm one of them. And part of that reason is because in the past, if I write a proposal and if I put Abia State as part of the focal state we are going to work, our partners will cancel it. They will cancel it. If I write a proposal to say, oh, we are going to work in Southeast and Abia State is part of it, they will ask me to delete it and use another state. And the reason is simple. For 24 years, we are bewitched by a group of adults who resolve to, to tie us down. As such, when development is coming to Abia State, when development partners are developing their intervention, Abia State is deleted. I know of a, I know a particular idea that over $100 million that's supposed to come to Abia State was given to Abia State just because of attitude of state actors. Today, we have our own governor who is not just passionate, but willing to support you, to create access, to open doors in order for you to do what you are interested in doing. So I want you to take advantage of this interaction. For if there are any of us here or any group here that are yet to strengthen their documents, Oh, I didn't tell you that I'm also part of the Advisory Council 
of a civil society regulatory uh, group. And we've done a lot. What culture is here is, is part of us uh, in Abuja. You know. uh, if, if you have no strategy document, adoptment, please strengthen the adoptment. If you, if you don't do annual uh, audit of your account, please do your annual audit of account. If you do not uh, uh, pay your uh, uh, annual returns, please pay your annual returns. If you do not have a board of trustee, kindly you know, create a board of trustee. If you do not hold meeting of board of trustees, please hold meeting of board of trustees. Because you, with, with people like us here in, in, this, in working with the state, there is, there is nothing you are going to tell us about NGO that we will not understand when you are saying it. So we we'll also like a situation whereby if we make recommendations or if we are asked to nominate organizations in Abia State that can work with international agencies will be struggling by reason of what we do or what we don't do. That is why I'm adding voice to what my colleagues have said in the past to also encourage you as we are going to open space not just to build your capacity but also to make you attractive to do more response. Because bulk of the problem, I tell you, what we have here, the majority of people have your state is hankering in you. I know about them. But, uh, I have mentioned the uh, uh, book culture. I know as many names as possible. Sometimes when we are in a meeting, when they bring this from our state, I just close my eyes and say, I'm from Lagos State. Because that's where my state is. That's where it is. So we don't want such a thing to continue. As much as we want to work with you, you should support us. We want a situation whereby when there are indicators of success stories, Abia State will be green. That's what we want. We want a situation whereby if the no agency drop money and say we want to our, our result is A, B, C, D, Abia State should escalate it and scale it up so that others can come to this place to learn good practices. Others can come to this place to ask questions, how are we doing it? How are we succeeding? They would like to copy from us. That is what we want to establish. Before I finish, as I said earlier, I work on disability issues. If you are not mainstreaming people with disabilities in the work you are doing, uh, I will not smile to you. Uh, because the SDG says no one should do what? No one should do what? No one should be left behind. That's what the SDG says. No one should be left behind. And we should try as much as possible. If you are developing indicator, if you are framing your objective, if you are targeting the people you are targeting, please create a space where you can mainstream these of the issues. If you don't understand how you are going to mainstream it, my colleague is here, who is the head of Abia State Office, is looking at me, Rachel, uh, I don't know. You know, she can support you to see how you can mainstream these of the issues in the intervention. You can support you how to ensure that you can use people with disabilities to attract that money you are looking for. So that together, together, all of us will build at the state we'll be proud of. I'm glad I can be here. 24 years ago, listen, 24 years ago, I came to this government house to cry for help. I lost my two hands in faith and sin in They cut my two hands because of my identity as a Nigerian, in which I still and his gang. Come again, come again, you lost your. I said, I lost my two hands. 24 years ago, in Freedom City okay. in which Charles Taylor okay. and his group, I don't know if you know about it, they captured me, set me on fire, shot my two hands. I cried. I came to Abia State, I cried to this, to this corporate house. And I was made a laughing stock. I ran away from Abia State because of its hostility to people with disabilities. I had to run away. When I ran, I ran to Lagos State. The current president of Nigeria, His Excellency, Chipola Bentinobu, received me, requested their government to set up a medical board for me. Chief. Don't forget, my name is not Kwale, it's not Ade, it's not uh, Shola or Bukumi, but a medical board was set up for me by Lagos State government. And the medical board recommended that I should flown abroad for medical treatment. Very good. But, this state, my state, I've not done it. But to go be the glory, that wilderness experience I went through, as I went to Lagos as a destitute, I passed through all just to acquire skills and capabilities to interfere with the service in this country. I'm not bragging.
bragging. I'm not bragging. You can Google me on the internet. We've secured the passage of the sensitivity at the national, the discrimination against the Supreme Commission Act. We secured the passage of the sensitivity bill in Lagos State, Lagos State Strike Post Law. We also secured the sensitivity law in here in Abia State, called Abia State, the sensitivity uh, 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 commission for basic institutions. Very good. These are the things we are doing. So it is now illegal. It's illegal for you to discriminate against anyone with disabilities. It is now illegal for you to make the environment inaccessible to people with disabilities here in Abia State, not just in Abuja. So what I'm trying to do is to bring the attention to it that the intervention that the Abia State government is keenly interested in ensuring that people with disabilities participate in society, even in leadership. And that is why His Excellency, in his wisdom, appointed me as his special assistant on persons with disabilities. Wow. That is why I'm here. That's that is why I'm here. And my role and responsibility is to encourage all to create access. To create what? Access. access. To create what? Access. 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 My role and responsibility here is to ensure equal opportunity. So that at the end of this government, all of us will use our bio and do monitoring and evaluation. You can say this is where we were, this is where we are, and we ask others that will take over to copy and paste. You know, I learned about copy and paste. You know, I learned it in Uganda while I was the leader of the uh, uh, African campaign on disability and HIV. So I want to thank you so much for honoring our call. I want to thank my leaders here, in particular the Deputy Chief of Staff. Uh, the, the special advisor of media, my brother Koma, and my host, uh, Eric, you know, what Naka, you know, for creating this opportunity. Please don't trivialize it, take advantage of it. It is well with your state. Thank you. 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 Actually, the second of Okai Council Autonomous Community here in Abia State, and also the MPCEO Volvo Nigeria Limited, operators of the federal government approved domestic export warehouse here in Omaha. Today we are going to the what uh, your problems uh, your pain might be a problem during this uh, process? Uh, or the government of Abia State, it will be too early for me to say they are not doing anything. They have done more than I have expected for now. We have built a facility measuring 5.1 hectares of land along the Enugu Lakot Expressway, housing about 300 shops, having uh, three warehouses. For now, we are constructing full container storage terminal. When completed, consignments from abroad can be cleared in Omaha here. But for now, we have been licensed by the federal government through the Nigerian Export Promotion Council to assist in doing custom doc documentation, examination of goods that leave this shore to any part of the world. Uh, at that very place, customs have been posted to us, Nigerian Quarantine, NPA, Shippers Council, the federal government has done that, but we have a little problem now. Our problem is how to make our farmers know that our organic farm products, products are needed in every part of the world. Then, how to pick these consignments from rural areas to Umaya here, where they will be properly processed. We are deeply touched about the rejection of Nigerian agro-products outside the shore because the exporters were not properly guided. That is why now the federal government has decentralized shipping or export from Lagos or no other things to give license to private entrepreneurs. Last year, uh, 14 licenses were given in the whole federation, and Abia State was given that of uh, Southeast. 
On 1st of um, November, the Nigerian Shippers Council will be coming to my to see how ready we are with our own uh, equipment here. We are appealing to the government to assist us in one way. Can find out from Nigeria Export Promotion Council after commissioning Kaduna and Kano Domestic Export Warehouse, the next is Abia. And we have nothing to show now. All we have done there has been through personal help. We need the donor agencies, the government for now, to provide for us at least solar dryers so that uh, our cocoa farmers, people that are into ginger, cashew and others, can now get their project, uh, products properly treated here to meet global market requirement. Uh, for what we need now, we need a gamma radiation and solarization equipment. If we have this, our oranges can be preserved like the apples we are bringing from South Africa. They can last for six months without spoiling. Our banana, our pineapple, all we have here, our vegetables, spinach and other things. I also want to let you understand that the Igbo land in particular can grow zobo, hibiscus. Last year, the federal government got an order for $3 billion from Mexico to ship uh, Zobo. Uh, and only the north we gain from that. But that's our land here can do it. So we are pleading that the government, if they also want to reduce the hardship we are undergoing through the export process, now that they have given us license that you don't have to go to Port Harcourt or anywhere, to do your custom documentation for your export, they should assist us, provide us solar dryers, give us um, vehicles that can convey consignments from here to Enugu Airport. You might be surprised to hear that uh, Rwanda is living on export of cassava leaves, that is what's in here. Aircraft that come to southeast here goes home empty. On air wharf is empty, nothing happened there, but in Kenya, they're exporting uh, rose flour. They're exporting other things. So if that machine gets here, our orange, our mango, all our products, our yam, will stay fresh for 12 good months. And that will reduce uh, food waste. We export for foreign exchange. When we, after exporting, we have surplus here to eat. A hungry man is an angry man. And in a nation, we are only the poor goes to farm. The rich buys all the products and poverty continues. But if the rich, like I did not, I can't remember any major, I can't remember any captain upwards that doesn't own um, a dam, we are the farmer. But here, all we're selling here is petrol and hotel. Nobody's thinking of sustainable agricultural product uh, processing. Thank you. Thank you very much. How, Thank how you can you describe this event? Oh, Jesus Christ. This event, I never expected it. I was not invited. I had it on radio. I knew it had something to do with poverty reduction. I am here. The first I've ever, I was Nazi vice chairman in this state before. For From 1995, I've been here when I come from, from Taiwan to Kano, Kano to this place. I've never seen a government that has organized the NGOs. The NGOs, their problem has been funded most of the time. But what I'm saying is that the NGOs now, if they can embark on export, they have money to support organizations, not only begging people to help them. In Taiwan, you find it difficult to get someone to work for you in your factory because everybody is busy doing something. So this idea of we must build factories like Golden Guinea, uh, ceramics, uh, let's teach them how to do this much more. And then when we do that one, see we have clear, a calcium here, we have everything here, we are still buying tile and plants here, but as we can produce this here. We have the technique. Most of the artisans that were trained through the skill acquisition are now Okada and Tiket riders because they don't have a common facility. So we all the equipment we're asking for now is nothing but common facility so that the farmer can bring his, uh, this in there, the exporter can come there and perfect them to meet global standards for export. And by there, Abia will get too much. Well, my name is uh, Pastor Mukocha Nozeno Sen. I'm the Executive Director of Initiative for ID Development and the Emancipatory Leadership in Nigeria. I do Nigeria to the side. So how can you describe this event today? Oh, well, to be very candid and sincere, um, I double as also the, the, co the Secretary Open Government Partnership in the states uh, from the non-state actors. For us, this is just um, 
an eye opener. For us, this is just the normal, the new normal. For us, this is the way to go. There is no um, collaboration that will, um, you know, uh, span out and turn to something most credible if the civil society actors are not carried along in that, um, you know, focus um, um, agenda. However, the major point remains that um, for this program today, I see it as a way to reposition Abia. I see it also as a way to chart a new course as far as this government is concerned. I also see it as a way of also reaching out to the unreached. Because our part of our work or effort at the community level is to evangelize. And by that evangelism, I mean social evangelism, you cannot do without that. There's no government that will make a whole lot of money if the essence of that government is not being mainstream at the local you know, level. And who are the people that should stand a better chance to do that? The civil society, the NGOs. That's why I see this as the new normal. This is the way to go. And my major point is, let it continue to get sustained. Let it continue to resonate across the board. Let the fire not quench at this point in time. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. See, uh, you, you, you were saying something uh, uh, in the hall as one of the factors that affect the agencies, poor funding yeah. and poor accountability. What sure. do you have to say about that? What, on the side of the... Okay, on the side of the government, on the side of the people. What, the let, let, of me, people. let me look at it on, the, on, 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 those, um, on both sides. You know, on the side of government, government should be more open. Government should be more open and transparent and accountable. That's one. Then another thing is this: um, if, if once the books are open and accountable and transparent, the donor agencies will be attracted the more to do something with the state at large. And do you know the implication? What it simply means in essence: if the state can get it right, that means we are opening the doors for the international donors to actually have trust and confidence in pumping huge sums of you know funds in developmental effort as far as the state is concerned, that's one. Then secondly, on the part of the civil society, you know, actors, um, there, is, there is also a need to remain open, remain transparent, remain accountable. And if I say open, remain open as it should. And when that is the case, and the donor agencies have also uh, captured that succinctly and sincerely, there's nothing that will stop form from rolling into the state there's nothing that will stop from from really into the accounts of the civil society, you know, actors. And I tell you, once that happens, we are opening the doors for even development, as far as Abia State is concerned, and as far as every citizen that is here is concerned. We we'll, we'll talked about, you know, capacity building, we talk about empowerment, we we'll talk about strengthening of, um, you know, civil space and all that, all that thing. There's no way that can happen most effect effectively if the place of transparency and accountability is losing its grips. That is exactly the way to go. And I believe that God has really brought us to that, um, can I call it to Huru? And all we need to do is to join hands together to make it a reality. That is it. Thank you. Thank you. It is to fulfill the promise of the governor's excellency of the team to strive to drive prosperity to the grassroots. The reactions the excitement are uh, enough testament, you know, to the appreciation of the participants and the determination of the governor to deal decisively with poverty at the grassroots. So what do we intend to achieve? Yeah. Achieve. Yeah, achieving through? It is to um, establish that strong relationship with the heads of these NGOs to inform them, to make them understand the preparedness of the government, to assist in them, you know, uh, attract the required funds that would give them the platform and the enablement to drive government vision of empowering people at the grassroots to the fullest. So it is a great opportunity um, that has taken off. It's going to be sustained. It's not a one-off thing. And of course, it is in the interest of the people because just like they attested to the fact that this is the first of its kind, so it's going to be sustained. It is a progressive you know, initiative that will help drive um, prosperity 
to the doorsteps of the people at the grassroots. Okay.